Hi, my name is Angela. Welcome to my homeschool channel, Homeschool HQ. I'm going to be talking with you in this video about the different rules and requirements for homeschooling your child or your children. Part of what I'm going to be discussing is the requirements for the educator, the requirements for the curriculum and what is required to be taught, the requirement for the hours of teaching for the school year. I will also be talking with you about the notification of intent to homeschool. The, I will not only tell you where to find it, how to find it, who to send it to, but also what to put in it. I will give you a couple of different options that I will include in the links below that you can find at a separate time. I will do a w complete walkthrough so that you can find it and on your own time. If you stay tuned I will do all of that with you I will make this process so much less overwhelming than it needs to be it is very simple and you can do it just stay with me thanks okay so the first resource that I'm going to show you I'm just going to Google typing in laws for Ohio homeschool first thing that comes up is Ohio homeschool laws HSLDA this is a HSLDA is a great homeschool resource you can find any state to find out what your requirements are on yours I'm going to start off with Ohio because it's my state um, <clears throat> there are two options. Option one is the one that I partake in and most people do. I don't know a whole lot about option two. Um, you can go to HSLDA to find out more. Um, the first one, this is, this is going to tell you exactly what you need to do based off of Ohio. Once you click on your state, different requirements are for different states. Um, it has a list of different things that you're going to be expected to do. You do have to notify the, your superintendent of your school that you do want to homeschool. There are so many hours that you have to spend for the school year learning that they do require. There are certain subjects that you have to teach. They are listed here. There's another resource I'm going to show you in a minute that's also going to list it for you. There are qualifications for the teacher. For the parent that's going to be doing the homeschooling, you must have a high school diploma, a GED, or standardized test scores demonstrating high school equivalents. If you don't have that, you can find someone like a grandparent or a friend that has a bachelor's degree and they can oversee your homeschooling. Requirements for subjects that need to be taught, including language, reading, spelling, writing, geography, history of the United States, and Ohio for our state, government, math, science, health, phys ed, fine arts, including music, first aid, safety, and fire prevention. Seems like a lot. Um, anytime that you are teaching them to cook, you can include that in with your uh, many different things. You can teach the first aid, safety, um, you can teach them about health through nutrition, you can teach them math because you're, te you're measuring things out. Um, te you build something out with wood, you're measuring, you're cutting, that's math, you can include that, that's safety. I mean, there's, there's ways to get what you're required to teach because that 900 hour requirement for the school year is a little quite, for Ohio, is a little disturbing. Not all states are going to require the 900 hours. Ohio does. But like I said, if my son's out building something with his dad, that counts. If my son is cooking in the kitchen, that counts. I'm going to count that. Um, <clears throat> so this, this is talking about an assessment. You don't need to worry about that for the first year. Ohio allows you to skip it. The second year, though, at the end of it, you're going to have to submit something if you want to continue with homeschooling you have to submit that you're proficient. So you either find an assessor that is a certified teacher who can look over a few of your projects, your assignments, and make sure that they are progressing, or you could have them take a state test just like they do for like the Ohio, Ohio standardized test. Um, some more information on this website, this is very helpful. You could also become a member on this, web, on this website, the HSLDA, you have a member, and they will even offer you legal advice for homeschooling if that becomes an issue. I don't foresee that becoming an issue anytime soon. It's pretty cut and dry as long as you follow the requirements that's listed out for you on this website or you can go to the next resource that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. 
as long as you follow those guidelines and you do what they say, you will be fine. So we just saw the HSLDA website, great resource. Now I'm going to take you straight to the Department of Education for Ohio. Each state has their own Department of Education website. I recommend you go to yours. Each one's going to have different requirements. Ohio is what I'm talking about here though. Um, follow what I'm showing you. If you are for Ohio, you're gonna be able to find it somewhere. There's gonna say a link that says homeschool. Click on it. It's gonna be easy to find. You just have to look for it on your state's Department of Education website. Here is the contact information for the Department of Education. If you need to call them or email them for any questions, um, just find your Department of Education website and it will be listed. This right here, straight from the government, tells you exactly what you need to do to be a homeschooler in Ohio. 900 hours of instruction per year, notify the superintendent every year and provide an assessment of the student's work. This link right here that I'm going to click here in a minute will show you all the expectations. This right here is a responsibility for the home educated students. This means what subjects are you expected to teach? How long are you expected to teach it for? And how do you notify what you're teaching and how you're getting it taught to your student when you send in your notification of intent to homeschool to your superintendent? This is a great resource. Um, tells you everything, cut and dry. I would recommend printing it off just in case you don't wanna go back through this hassle of website links. Um, but once you get the hang of this, there's really, it's really cut and dry. I mean, you get it, it's easy. It seems overwhelming. It can make you a little worrisome that you're not gonna submit everything or be able to teach everything, but it really, you really can teach everything. It's really easy. You really just have to get this notification of intent and meet the criteria that they explain. So this link is talking about the academic assessment report you have to submit that. Ohio allows you to skip the first year, so if you continue for a second homeschool year, you don't have to submit an assessment. If you wanna do a third year, if you wanna go back to public school, you have to submit an assessment for that second homeschool year. Again, that has to be a certified teacher that writes a narrative about the progress that your child made while homeschooling. It has to be a licensed teacher. You could also do a standardized test that shows that your student has met the expectations for their grade. Um, you could do that privately. You do have to pay for the test. I've seen, so the licensed teachers, they're about $75 is what I'm seeing. Um, the assessment, I'm seeing it to be about 50 to $75 as well. Last but not least, the notification of intent to homeschool. Where do you send it? Where do you get it from? I'm gonna show you two resources for Ohio. Again, Department of Education is going to have this form for you for your state. This one is for Ohio. When I typed it in, it looks like I'm using Bing, usually I use Google. When I typed it in, it was the very first form. You could use this one, you could submit this. This is exactly what they want you to send. There's another form that's a little bit more simple with less, less of your information included. You can send your own form that is sufficient and a lot of homeschool parents that have been doing this for years and who wants to keep the quality of homeschool and all the freedoms to homeschool, they want you to send a different form. For Ohio, ohiohomeschoolingparents.com has a good form. You can download a couple of different options to your computer, print it off, fill it out, submit it. This is the one that I use. I submit it to my superintendent of my school. It's worked for me. Um, it, just, it just allows us to have a little bit more control over homeschooling. That way they can't keep making adjustments and keep taking away some of our freedoms for homeschooling. If we keep it in the ball in our court, we control the form, give them the most important information that they need but without going over, going in too much depth. So that was the first form. There is, there's a couple different options that you could choose. This is called ohiohomeschoolingparents.com. Um, your state's gonna have something like this. I don't know if it's gonna be called the same thing, probably not, but look up notification of intent to homeschool form. Type it in and type in your state. 
you're gonna get all kinds of options and I would recommend you start with one. You use one that's not through the Department of Education. Use your own. Again, just to keep the just to keep the homeschool freedoms, keep keep the control up to the parents, not so much the government, but again, if you use the one from the Department of Education, that is fine. That is what they want. That will work. Thank you for your time and hopefully this was of help to you. If you need any of the links, they will be provided below. Again, thank you for watching my homeschool channel, Homeschool HQ. If you have any questions or if you want to give advice, please put it in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.